Coach Simmons, good morning. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Coach, talk about last week's game as you overcame some early adversity, but you held on and things went your way down the stretch to pull off the win against the Aggies. Well, uh, first off, you know, again, I want to um, take the time to continue to, to offer our condolences and prayers to, you know, getting everyone who's been affected by this terrible storm that's come in and ravaged uh, Northwest Florida. And um, our football team the last couple of days has tried to do our part of going out in the communities and, and passing out waters and food and moving branches and all kind of stuff to help out. But, um, again, last week was definitely one of the most trying weeks of my coaching career, you know, having to uh, endure a category four hurricane and um, shelter the team um, for just practice times, uh, travel to North Carolina and, and then travel to a place that you know, is always tough to play and uh, face some adversity there as well. And for our guys to, to come out and, and fall down early, um, but to continue to fight and persevere and never quit uh, was a true uh, testament to their to their character. And I, I think they're really growing up as young men um, right in front of our eyes. And we're very um, happy with the progress that they've made as, a, as not only a football team, but, but as, as student athletes. And um, But again, it was a great ball game between two really good football teams. Again, uh, you know, Sam, has obviously done a phenomenal job there at A&T. Uh, we're taking over from, uh, from from Broadway and the program that they built there together. And uh, you can you can see their identity. They play hard. Um, they're fundamentally sound. And, uh, you know, again, it was, it was a game of inches. It literally came down to the last play of the game, which two good football teams, that's, that's usually what happens. And so we were very fortunate to come out with the win. Um, you know, happy for the guys, happy for this program. And uh, we're at a place that we hadn't been in a long time here at FAMU. And, uh, but, again, there's a lot of football left to be played, so you know, we, we don't want to pat ourselves on the back um, too much. We want to continue to go to, go to work knowing that, you know, in another week or so, uh, we have a very good Morgan State team coming in. So we'll take advantage of this by week and um, get some things done in the classroom, try to get healthy, um, do some more community service, and then uh, focus our attention to the Bears as they, as they come to town. And speaking of patting yourself on the back, uh, I know you all as coaches and players, uh, y'all understand the task at hand, but obviously there are people on the outside that's going to do it for you. So how do you kind of keep them from patting you on the back to a certain extent? But we know they are. But, you know, how do you just keep them from, you know, overdoing it, knowing you still have several games left uh, before the season is decided? Well, there's nothing you can do about the fans paying on the back. That's what they're going to do. That's why, that's why they call fans. Uh, they're fanatical. And they love this university. Uh, they love for this football program, and so um, you know, Rattler Nation is on fire right now. I mean, social media is blowing up, um, and we can't walk in the stores. I mean, there's nowhere we can go without people, you know, telling us how proud of us they are, and, and rightfully so. Um, so again, the, the, I think the, the more challenging task is to make sure the team stays grounded, not necessarily you know, curtail the fans. Let them be excited because they deserve it. Uh, but for our football team, uh, really two things I, I think keeps us focused. Uh, one. You know, we have a thing around here that we get what we deserve. You know, and, and when we work hard, when we do little, the little things right, uh, we deserve success on the field on Saturday. So if we start to pat ourselves on the back, we start to get complacent, don't don't work as hard, um, take things for granted, obviously it'll show up on the field on Saturday. And then the second thing is, you know, we have a saying that, that you know, we chase perfection. And, and in our pursuit of perfection, you know, we hope to hit excellence along the way. And, um, you know, so we haven't played a perfect game yet. You know, Saturday's game was a great win for us. But it was a very sloppy game. I mean, kick return for a touchdown, two block punt, uh, missed field goal, missed extra point, dropped wide open pass on, on a fake field goal, and uh, uh, offensively, you know, really struggled the first half. Um, so there's a lot of uh, things that we can improve upon, and we'll work hard on those things this week. So until we play that perfect game, we got to keep going. You know, and again, we haven't played it yet. And uh, again, so our, our pursuit of that perfect game, I, I think, is something that'll keep us grounded to, to understand that our work is never done. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to register a question, please press the one followed by the four on your telephone. You will hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been answered and you would like to withdraw your registration, please press the 1 followed by the 3. If you are using a speakerphone, please lift your hands up before entering your request. One moment, please, for the first question. And our first question comes from the line of Melvin 
Beal with Inside Sports. Please proceed with your question. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, good morning, Melvin. Coach, you were talking about the hurricane and the impact there in northwest Florida. I know that uh, your team basically has been involved with a broader effort from the university. Can you talk a little bit more about the areas that you guys were able to send the players out to help people in the community? Uh, well, Sunday, um, obviously, you know, usually it's a practice day for us, but being that we have a bye week, um, we, we gathered, gathered uh, about about 15 guys, and uh, we split them up into two groups, and we, we took them over to Gadsden County, which obviously is where I'm from. Um, my wife and I took the one group uh, and, and passed out food, um, chicken, and, um, you know, uh, just food and water, bottles of water to, to the, the local residents there in uh, Havana, Florida, which is just west of Tallahassee, and then the other group went with Vaughn Wilson, our SID, over to Mariana, uh, which obviously the more west you go, uh, the worse the damage. And uh, so Mariana was hit a lot a lot harder than we were here in Tallahassee, just west of us. And so he took a group down there, the same thing, passed out waters. Um, you know, again, a lot of those people don't have running water, clean running water. They won't have lights for, for weeks. Um, in some places, they may not have lights for the rest of the year. Um, it's just that bad. So um, you know, we're, we're trying to, to have a, a concerted effort to, to help out. And then yesterday, uh, we split up into three groups, and uh, one group went to my home church and uh, passed out, you know, food, spaghetti, and, and green beans to the community. One group went to Gretna, which is probably the most impoverished um, community in Gadsden County, and same thing, passed out food and water. And then another group went to Greensboro uh, to do the same thing. So. Um, you know, we met as an athletic department yesterday to figure out how we as an entire athletic department can help out because uh, this isn't something that's going to be done in a week. I mean, a lot of these places are going to need you know, hot food for, for a month because they, they, you know, they can't eat anything hot because they don't have any power. Um, they don't have clean water. So you know, this isn't just going to be something that we have to do this week. This will be something that we maybe have to stretch over the course of the next two or three months as an athletic department. Well, certainly commend you and the program for reaching out in the community. There is devastation there in northwest Florida. Uh, turning your attention to the game, uh, talk a little bit about that 13-play, 70-yard drive uh, to set you up for the winning field goal. There was um, an interesting mix of play calling that I thought was pretty good with some runs mixed in. Talk a little bit about that drive. Well, you know, again, we, we practice two minutes every week, and that's something that uh, twice this year we've had those situations. Uh, obviously, versus Jackson State, uh, we got down into the basically three-yard line and, and uh, wasn't able to finish that one because of a, a mismanagement of play clock by my by my part. But, um, you know, it's something that, again, that we take great pride in on both sides of the ball. You know, we work that two-minute drill, and uh, our guys understand the tempo that we want to play at. They understand, you know, about getting out of bounds and, uh, when to take time out in all those situations. So, of course, uh, anytime you're, you're playing football, it's a situational game. And so that situation, we want to make sure that we're prepared for it. And um, obviously, you know, the, the, the choice of running the ball in certain situations, and obviously when you feel like defense is, is playing the pass and dropping multiple guys in the coverage, um, as a t started to do near the end of it, we, we, you know, handed the ball off a couple of times, and the running back and O-line did a great job of getting those first downs. And, uh, you know, again, but you never know how it's going to work out. You, know, you just call the plays and you, you, you hope for the best. But I do, again, I commend Ryan Stanley. I mean, he, he it was beat up, um, you know, back really bothering him from the Norfolk game. He really played through that the entire game. He took some big shots in the, in the, in the ANC game. And um, there was really a question of whether he would go in that last drive. I mean, we, we actually had the backup quarterback warmed up, helmet on, ready to go. And Ryan decided that he was going to gut it out for that last drive. And, uh, he made some timely throws. Um, the receivers did a great job of, of getting to the sticks and getting first downs. We had to convert a couple fourth downs of that drive. And then, uh, you know, we had a timeout left, so we were able to get it down to the middle of the field on the, on the, I guess the six, seven-yard line and, uh, and kill it, you know, call a timeout to get the field goal team on. So just really good execution by those guys. And, uh, again, the coaches, you know, I took my hat to them uh, for preparing them for that situation. And uh, they did everything that we, that we needed them to do in that, in that crunch time. Uh, in the crunch time. Advance that conversation a little bit because I understand that Stanley had a baseball-sized knot on his back. How is his health right now, and um, what is his situation going into the next game? 
Well, you know, we, we, we went yesterday uh, to get you know, MRI and to get it looked at, and um, they don't think it's too severe, uh, but again, it is definitely uh, something that we need to pay close attention to. And uh, so we'll probably hold him all of this week just to make sure that he doesn't aggravate it, get as much rest as he possibly can, because um, obviously we need him as our unquestioned leader to, to be as healthy as he can possibly be in this, in this home stretch. And uh, with him out there, you know, it gives us a chance to run our entire offense. Um, you know, he knows all of our checks. He knows everything that we need him to do. And so we definitely would like to have our, have our leaders there. So uh, we're going to try to protect him as much as we can this week. Um, again, hopefully we'll get a good um, prognosis from the medical staff about how, you know, uh, I guess hopefully in severe the, 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 the injury is. But, I mean, he, he did take a pretty good shot against Norfolk, and it did swell up like, about like a baseball um, last Saturday, right. you know, at a and Finally, Coach, I want you to talk about your defense because, you know, you look at 21 points on the board, but you mentioned that the first play of the game basically was a 100-yard touchdown return. And then there was a block punt that put Mm -hmm. the defense on a short field. Talk a little bit about the performance of your defense um, this game and into the season. Well, they've been playing phenomenal. I mean, I think the A and T had 50 yards in the second half of, of total offense. And um, you know, we did a stat uh, in conference games. Um, in the second half, we're outscoring opponents 72 to 13, and uh, that's six points versus um, Savannah State, seven points versus Central, and then you know, shutouts the last two weeks of so Norfolk and A and T. And you're talking about some some high-powered offenses that the defense has kept us out of the end zone off the scoreboard in the second half. So they're really playing at an extremely high level. Um, our, our defense coordinator and his, and his assistants are doing a phenomenal job of game planning, but an even better job of making game time adjustments. So A&T hit us on some things there in the first half. Uh, they went in at halftime and made the necessary adjustments, and uh, it really made it hard for A&T to move the ball in the second half. But those guys are just playing extremely great football, and obviously the old saying, defense win championships. So in this, in this push to, to win the MEAC, we definitely need strong defensive play. And uh, we're getting it. So hopefully they can continue that. Uh, if, if their work ethic, their attitude is an indication, um, I think we will because they, I think they're playing with a chip on their shoulders uh, because they do want to be the top defense in the conference. Well, thanks, Coach, and um, good luck with your preparation this week. Th- thank you. And there are no further questions at this time. Coach Simmons, uh, once again, thanks for taking time out and speaking with us. And uh, enjoy the off week. And uh, we will definitely uh, we applaud your efforts in assisting in the recovery effort for the state of Florida. Uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Florida a m is off this weekend and will return to action next weekend with the home contest versus Morgan State. We're now joined by Bethune-Cookman University head coach Terry Sims. The Wildcats defeated South Carolina State this past weekend and will return home to host North Carolina A&T State this weekend. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, Ryan. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Uh, talk about last week's game in Orangeburg. It, it basically was a game you took control early on, but then you had to fight off a feisty Bulldog squad at the end. Yeah, we did. And, and you know, I, I think looking at our first quarter, uh, it was probably one of the better – uh, first quarter that, that we've had in, in, a, in a while. Uh, we, we started fast. Uh, we, were, we were clicking on all cylinders, you know, offense. And uh, actually not having too bad of a, a day on, on defense as well. I think, you know, our guys kind of took took it to heart. They took the challenge. We, we challenged them about starting fast. And they went out and did just that. And now just talk about uh, your team's perseverance down the stretch, um, especially it came down to a two-point conversion. But what did you preach to the team uh, with the game on the line? Um, what, what did they have to do in order to come up with the win? Well, I mean, we had to continue to, to do what, what we have been doing, and, and that's not quit. We had to continue to play and uh, not panic. You know, we don't believe in that. You know, as long as there's time on the clock, we believe that, you know, it's an opportunity for us to, to do something positive. So uh, we, we didn't say anything special. You know, that's what our guys do. We, we work, we, you know, we practice situations.
situations every day in practice. We will have at least three situations a day uh, just to, to, you know, make sure they're in tune to what's going on during the, the course of a football game. Uh, I, I think we had some sloppy moments, uh, and, and that's not taking anything away from South Carolina State because, you know, they, they took advantage of those opportunities. But uh, we, we had some moments where uh, we just didn't finish plays, and they were able to capitalize on those and, and make positive plays out of them. But, you know, again, at the end of the game, our guys did not waver. They continued to play, and they continued to make plays in all three phases of the game, and it ended up, you know, working well for us and working out in our favor uh, in the end. And lastly, Coach, uh, before we take questions, um, you know what's on the line this week. You have A&T coming in, and history suggests it'll be a tough contest. So uh, just talk about uh, the mindset you're going to preach to the team heading into this weekend's game. Well, I mean, I, I think everyone in the conference understands what's on the line when we line up every Saturday. Um, you, you can't really predict the game in this conference this year, and, you know, I love that. You know, anyone that's a competitor would, would love it. We understand we got a good football team coming in here, you know, but I think we have a good football team here. So uh, we have to prepare, as usual, um, not put any undue pressure on anyone because we, we have to line up and play the football game uh, against a, a good football team, against a football team who, who has a lot of weapons. You know, and when you watch these guys on film, you, you can see that uh, Coach Washington and his staff, they have these guys prepared. And, and they're going to come in, and the thing that, that you can tell about any A&T team, they're not going to make a lot of mistakes. You know, they're, they're not going to beat themselves. So we, we just have to prepare as we do every week and, and get ready for a good football team to come in here. And, and hopefully – um, we come out on top. You know, they're going to be tough games in, in, until the season's over with for us every week. Every week's going to be a tough one. Last week was a tough one. This week will be a tough one. And, you know, the, the weeks to follow also. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, to register a phone question, it is the one, followed by the four on your telephone. And our first question is from Melvin Beal with Inside Sports. Please proceed with your question. Good morning, Coach Sims. How are you? Good morning, man. How are you? I'm well. Coach, I'm over in Tampa and obviously Florida A&M up in the Tallahassee area. Uh, we weren't impacted by the hurricane as much. Uh, what about you guys on that part of the state, in that part of the state, Daytona? Any impact? No, uh, we we didn't we didn't get um, any damage over here. Uh, we're we're you know constantly praying and and and, and you know our, our thoughts and, and and prayers go out to everyone on that end because uh, we do understand. Uh, we had the same thing happen here, uh, you know, two of the last three years. So we we understand that. Um, we did. We got some, you know, rain, but that, that's typical of Florida. But no, no big damage. Coach, you, you alluded to North Carolina A&T coming in well prepared this weekend. What specifically concerns you about them on offense? <laughs> All eleven on the field. <laughs> no, they, they, they have. They, you know, they, they obviously have a quarterback that can run the show. I mean. His numbers uh, are, are, you know, there. They, he's proven. They, they still have two running backs that, that, that run the ball very well. And they have receivers that they go make plays on the ball. So I, I think when, when you look at this football team, you have to not just worry about one guy. And I think the way that, that you're successful against uh, a team like this, you have to be fundamentally sound and you can't beat yourself. You know, we can't have the offside penalties that we had last week and, you know, those things. We, we have to stay away from that stuff, and I think we'll be fine. Talk a little bit about them on defense because they have um, a pretty dominating defense, and uh, any concerns for your offense going up against that defense? Well, you know, yeah, you, you, you have, they have a corner that I think he was a uh, highly touted uh, freshman in this conference last year. He's an aggressive guy. Uh, you know, he, he loves 
to get his hands on receivers, and uh, I think that's a, a plus for them. They have a, a very, very active um, linebacking core, and their defensive ends are they're long guys uh, that that you know try and put pressure on the quarterback. So I think you know our offensive line definitely has to come to play, and our receivers are going to have to win some one-on-one battles. That that's the thing that we're we're preaching this week. Uh, you know we're we're, we're preparing our guys to go out and, and win their individual battles, you know, outside. So ho- hopefully we can get that established and, and loosen the defense up a little bit uh, so we can get our run game going. Finally, Coach, special teams, always a big part of the game that's sort of underrated. Uh, but A&T showed up big time in that department. How big is special teams going to come into play for this game? Huge. Special teams has, has uh, I, I shown up huge in, in all of our games this year. Uh, and, and that's, you know, why we spend so much time on it in practice. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a special teams guy, so I understand uh, what special teams can do for a football game. And, you know, we spend a, a lot of time each day in practice on special teams. We put a lot of meeting time in the special teams because, because that's, a, you know, that's the third phase of the game. You know, a lot of folks kind of, you know, look at it as, oh, it's just special teams. But you have to look at it as an equal part of the football game. And I think it it definitely will uh, be a huge factor in this game on on Saturday because uh, our special teams units are playing pretty good right now, and so are theirs. So, you know, we we just got to see who makes the least mistakes and who makes the the most plays. Coach? Good luck with your preparation, and uh, thank you. Thank you. No problem, Coach. Well, again, thank you uh, for speaking with us, and we'll talk with you uh, this time next Tuesday. All right, Ryan. Thank you. You're welcome. But Thune Cookman will host North Carolina A&T State on Saturday in Daytona Beach. Kickoff is set for 4 p.m. as the contest will be shown live on ESPN3. We're now joined by Delaware State University head coach Rod Milstead. The Hornets fell to Howard this past weekend and will travel to South Carolina State on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, Ron. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Uh, talk about last week's game as Howard. As uh, How much did your opening drive have an impact on what took place after? Well, Ryan, uh, we, we have a team that uh, – they're steady growing every week. We're young. Uh, we're immature. We have a, a, a lot of work to do here. And not making any mistakes, Howard came out, and, and they played a, a, a really good football game. They were able to capitalize on, you know, our mistakes. And when you come out and you get the ball and uh, you have a good first play and a second play, you you fumble the ball and give them the ball on the 28-yard line. That, that, that really uh, hurts your program. And uh, defensively, we're struggling. You know, we, we have a lot of work to do, uh, but uh, we're going to stay the course and stay true to the process and, and continue to build. And speaking of the building process, uh, you've been on the road every week except uh, the one game last uh, two weeks ago in Dover. And considering where you're at in this point of the schedule, is it taking a toll on the team from a physical standpoint, or that really uh, doesn't have much to do with it uh, in the grand scheme of things? Well, I, 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 I'm quite sure that, that everything has, has a part to do with it, but it's still, uh, regardless of where you play uh, or how far you have to travel, we, we do a great job on, of preparing our kids uh, with our travel so they know in advance how we're going to travel, where we're going to go, where we're going to play. and We give them enough resting time to get their bodies together. So uh, whether we fly to a game or it's, it's a day trip, it's always enough time to make sure that uh, they are prepared and have the proper rest to, to put on the performance. Right now it's just our uh, uh, what we're doing uh, come game time. And, and I, and I uh, you know, attribute – to how I play to, to being, you know, mature. You know, a lot of teams that we're playing have been together three or four years. But if you look at it, we've only been together as a team since August the 1st. So we have a long ways to go. Um, but uh, our, our guys knew uh, what the schedule was and, and how it was going to present itself. So 
mentally, uh, everyone's prepared for it. Uh, we wish we had more home games. Uh, unfortunately, this season, uh, we are, we're only going to have four. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. As a reminder, once again, to register for a phone question, it is the one followed by the four. It is the one four to register a phone question. And there appear to be no questions on the phone lines at this time. Uh, Coach, talk about this week's opponent in South Carolina State and kind of like you all, they're a very young team, but what stands out uh, when you look at them on film? Well, they're well coached. Um, they have a history of, of MEAC championships. Uh, uh, they're going to be, uh, this is the last, uh, apparently the last homecoming for, for their head coach, and uh, I'm quite sure uh, it's going to be very, very rowdy down in, uh, in Orangeburg, South Carolina. So we have to come out and, 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 and play mistake-free football. Uh, this is a good game for us uh, to mature uh, as a team and to, to finally put three phases of football together. We already know it's going to be hostile. We know that uh, we're going to be the, the dinner date that shouldn't have been invited <laughs> So because of their homecoming. And uh, we got we have to uh, stand up to the pressures and be able to uh, uh, play four quarters of football in order to have a chance. They're well coached. They're well prepared. Uh, they may be young, but they've been in a system and a program that uh, when adversity shows up, they'll revert back to the habits that they know. So they have a great foundation. So we got to come in and uh, put together four, four quarters of football uh, to be successful against South Carolina State. And speaking of being successful, uh, you're number two in the conference in rush offense with 166 uh, yards per game. Um, just talk about your running attack and how that's been able to uh, stay consistent throughout the year. Well, you know, that's that's one of the bright spots here at Delaware State. People look at the record and say, well, them guys are 0-6, they're not very good. We do have some good players here. We do have uh, good quality coaches here as well. Uh, our problem has been uh, our maturity, and uh, uh, that's something we're very young. We have guys that uh, have never played Division One football before, uh, and, and they're getting to understand the speed of the game, the physicality of the game, the, the student at student athlete aspect of the game, being a student being a student athlete on and off the field. So we have a lot of growing and maturity to do, but uh, in order to build a good program, you got to start somewhere. Um, some of our guys had you know got thrown in the fire early in their careers, and they really didn't have a chance to to understand and, and get the chance to learn how to be a Division One football player. So. Uh, with, with my program, we're coming in, we're trying to build guys and, and uh, redshirt guys and get them to understand how we want it done so they can play for four years and not just be on the team for four years. So that's the game plan going forward. We will grow. We will get better. But uh, as of right now, our running game uh, is, is really not where we want it to be. We really think that we could uh, get more yards. I'd like to average close to, close to 300 yards a game, and we're not there yet. So we have a long ways to go. And, being an offensive line guy, you already know, Ryan, I'm running the ball first, and then uh, we'll, we'll get you when you put uh, eight, nine, ten guys in the box. And speaking of being an offensive line uh, guy, uh, how heavily involved are you with the line, and especially, you know, does it the time call for you to kind of reflect on what you've done to let them know that uh, it, everything can be achieved with hard work? Well, Ryan, you know, I, I, I try to, to get up and work out every day so I can stay in shape because uh, the one thing as a coach, and if you're going to teach a kid something, you got to be able to demonstrate it to them. You know, I, I never liked a coach that always told me how to do it, but he couldn't show me how to do it. Uh, I pride myself on still being halfway physically fit uh, to show our guys how to come out underneath the chute, how to take the proper steps, because if they got that visual aid and they can see, hey, coach can do it at 48, you know, I'm only 21, I'm 19, I'm 18. There's no reason why I can't, shouldn't be able to do it, and he's actually showing me how to do it. So I'm very involved in our offensive line, and I take personal pride into it because at the end of the day, when people look at the Delaware State University football team, the one thing they're definitely going to look at besides our record is how does that offensive line do? Their head coach was, and, and 
all MEAC, three-time all-conference guy. He was an All-American. He played in the NFL, won a Super Bowl as an offensive lineman. Why aren't they the best the best group on the team? And I pride myself in trying to keep them up and making them the best group on, on, on the football field. So I take a personal interest in our offensive line, and I will take a personal interest as long as I'm the head coach here at Delaware State. Well, thank you, Coach. And uh, can you still play right now? <laughs> Ryan, if I had to give him one play, that'd be it, but you better have the ambulance ready. <laughs> well, thanks, Coach. Uh, and good luck as you head down to Orangeburg this week uh, to uh, take on the uh, Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. Delaware State will head to Orangeburg to face off against South Carolina State University. Kickoff is set for 1.30 p.m., and the contest will be shown live on ESPN3. We're now joined by Howard University head coach Mike London. The Bison defeated Delaware State on Saturday and will head to Baltimore to face off against Morgan State on Saturday night. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? I'm doing great, Ryan. Good morning to you as well. Coach, uh, recap last week's game as your team took advantage of an early turnover and basically it set the tone for a solid day on both sides of the ball. Uh, yeah, it was it was good. To, it was our first home game uh, of the season. You know, uh, the weather has affected not only the early part of the season, as we see, it affected uh, a lot of the areas down in Florida and all you know any areas that that uh, people are still dealing with. So you know, we've had to you know just kind of deal with what the circumstances were and are. And um, you know, our first game against uh, Delaware State, our home game against Delaware State, we, I thought we played well in all three phases. Of the game, you know, we're looking for that type of uh, that type of success, you know, or that type of execution in a football game. Offensively, you know, we jumped up, we got 41 first half points. Uh, I thought the defense played extremely well. You know, the 14 possessions, eight of them were three and outs, and, and held them to field goals on two situations, and got that, as you alluded to, the early turnover at the beginning of the game. Jaquez as it was was outstanding once again the second game in a row. I believe he set a record for uh, most touchdowns in uh, two two back to back games in the history of Howard football. So hats off to him. The special teams won all four phases of the special teams battle, um, blocked the punt. So you know it was just we, things you, you strive for to try to get better at. Uh, I thought the coaches put a great game plan together and, and the players went out and executed. So. You know, Coach Milstead has got a got a young team that's going to be really good, and you know, know how that is. We're still young, but at least there were some opportunities that we executed, you know, better than what we'd had in the past. So, um, you know, great for the players for the you know for you know for another conference win, and now, you know, getting our mindset on traveling up to Baltimore to play Morgan State. And before we touch on this week's game, um, seems like every week we're honoring or talking about another player that's either a freshman or sophomore, and you have so many young players. Now, uh, the question i like to know is, are they playing out of necessity, or the talent level just put them to the top of the depth chart uh, as the season uh, went on? Well, you know, Ryan, and, and a lot of the coaches in the league are, are new themselves, and so when you come in, you know, you bring your own philosophy in in terms of recruiting the type of student athletes that will fit your scheme and systems. And so, you know, we're a, we're a three four movement, uh, you know, scheme on defense. Where you know we've been described as the go go offense on you know uh, in terms of a spread offense with up tempo. You know, uh, try to take advantage of your matchup offenses. And so you have to recruit to that model. And recruiting that model. Um, we were fortunate to have, you know, have great coaches that go out and can sit in living rooms with parents and talk about, you know, their son becoming an educated man, but also having a chance to compete for championships. And so, when you bring that type of young man in that wants to be competitive at all levels on the field, uh, in the classroom, in the community, that's our kind of guy. And in, you know, and having that kind of young man, then you you lend yourself to the opportunity to be successful in the field. And that's the goal of our program or any program. To find like-minded uh, individuals that can that can handle the academic rigors here at Howard, but also be able to play on the field. And we've had a lot of young players that, that have that capability that said yes to us. That may be very fortunate that you know turned down some FBS programs because of 
you know, what how it is and the social activism and the academics and just so many things I can keep talking about. But um, the players are good young players, and they're going to be better players as they get older. Thank you, Coach. We're going to open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. And our first question is from Toy Miller with Power News and Sports Radio. Please pursue your question. Hey, good morning, Coach. It's Ty Miller from Power News and Sports Radio Network. How are you doing? Good morning, Ty. Good. Thank you. I just want you to talk about how wide open the conference race is and, and how it might go down to the wire. Oh, wow. Uh, I tell you, I, I said it, I've said it before, and I know um, – the coaches in the conference, you know, always allude to it that every Saturday, literally, you know, you have to be able to, to, to compete and play at your best because you just you just never know. I mean, home and away, um, you know, the, the matter of the circumstances. Um, it's one of those things, like I said, the conference had a, good, a lot of good coaches and really a lot of good players in it. And, you know, you look at games traditionally, you look at it, and you circle, oh, that's a win, that's a lot. But I tell you, you just uh, – you just never know, and you see the games and the outcomes, not only from the MEAC perspective, but even nationally, you know, what's happened in the top ten, you know, and, and, and who's went down. But, you know, particularly in the MEAC, um, you see, you know, you see good games. You see competitive games, down to the wire games, um, you know, games that uh, that you would think that someone else would, uh, would take. But um, just can't underestimate, you know, a lot of times the power and the will of the young men that are playing the game. So it, it definitely is very competitive and it probably will go down to the to the last, you know, to the last game again in terms of one losses. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, it is the one followed by the four. There are no further questions at this time. And hey, coach, talk about uh, you mentioned playing at home, and pretty much you're in the area over the next few weeks. And this week, Morgan State, uh, you head up to Baltimore. Just talk about playing uh, Morgan State uh, under the lights in Baltimore on Saturday. Yeah, it's uh, you know it, it'd be another unique opportunity for us to play at night, travel up to Baltimore, Coach Jones. And, uh, and Morgan State, um, you know, offensively, you know, they, they're very experienced offensive line up front. I mean, they're, they're big and they're very experienced. They probably have an NFL prospect in their left tackle. Uh, the quarterback is athletic. Uh, he makes things happen for them. You know, defensively, they got a big nose tackle. Their DBs are aggressive. They blitz. They pressure. Uh, the number one in the conference in sacks, the number one in the conference in interceptions, and the number one in the conference in red zone defense. So, you know, they're, they're very aggressive, you know, when it comes to, you know, playing their style of ball. So it'll be, you know, again, important for us to, to uh, you know, to start fast and, uh, and just know that, you know, that the atmosphere there, I'm quite sure, will be will be electric, you know, a nighttime game. Um, you know, the crowd, I, I would expect to be, you know, to be there as well. So, you know, what we're excited about, as you mentioned, Ryan, um, you know, we're still – within the vicinity of the D.C. area going to play Baltimore in Baltimore then having two back-to-back home games after that. So, um, you know, it, it, it's good in the latter part of our season to, to be closer to home and, and, you know, and have that routine and the things that the kids are used to. So, but, but uh, you know, Morgan State has played well in, in a lot of the, you know, in their games. And like I said, very aggressive. And we look forward to, uh, to traveling up there to play them. And before we close out, um, just talk about because uh, he was named Player of the Week for the MEAC and he was also received a national honor in Jaquez Ezzard and just what does he bring to the table that if you have not seen him play uh, that you would want to watch uh, when you watch him for the first time? Yeah, yes, you know, Jaquez is uh, he, he's very quiet um, very humble young man um, you know he loves football he, you know Early in the morning workout, you see him 
you know, again in the afternoon, you know, particularly during the summers, he and Kalen and, and Kyle Anthony were out there just throwing the ball. Sometimes the lights weren't even on, and they were out there. Uh, very athletic, and he's got deceptive speed. He, he, he's one of the fastest players on our team, and he's got great, great hands. And um, I, I tell you, just, just being around him and watching him make some of those ca- catches that you see in the game, he makes those catches in practice as well. So you know, it, it's, it's important for you to have, you know, your deep threat guy or, or a guy that they want to play, you know, corner and a safety over top, then, you know, you have a guy like Kyle Anthony go back and throw it over him. He's a big size receiver, but, you know, Jaquez, you know, we'll, we'll catch his punts for us and he could do kickoff returns if we did it, but um, very important part of the, of the offense, you know, very important part of the team because of what he brings to the team, a selfless leadership style, so, um, but he'd be but more than a better player than he's a better young man. Thank you, Coach, and we'll talk with you again this time next week, and good luck as you head up to Baltimore on Saturday. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Have a good day. You too. Howard University will face off against Morgan State in Baltimore this weekend. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. and will be streamed live on ESPN3 and also shown on Sports Fever TV. We're now joined by Norfolk State University head coach Latrell Scott. The Spartans were off this past weekend and will return to action as they will face North Carolina Central for homecoming this Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, Ryan. Fine. How about yourself? I'm good. Coach, it seems like uh, we used the term several times this year, so, and I guess I have to use it again. How did you spend your open weekend, and what did your team and staff accomplish uh, with the rest? Well, we practiced a few days last week. Uh, obviously, you know, very, very disappointed about the loss. Uh, at Florida A&M, you know, you have an opportunity to, to, to uh, you know, be competitive against a really good football team, and I think uh, we let mistakes kill us, and it, it's a shame, you know, talk to our team about uh, the, the fact that it's a shame that you have to learn a hard lesson by losing a football game, but we practiced for a couple of days, and we gave the guys uh, some time away, you know, uh, these guys have been at it since August, and, uh, you know, we thought it was very important for those guys to get away and be able to do something outside of football, uh, so we let them go, and uh, we got back here on Saturday. And uh, Sunday, sorry, Sunday, and started focusing on uh, Central. And obviously, uh, one thing that stood out at this point in the season, you've only allowed three sacks up front. Uh, just talk about the play of offensive line uh, at this point of the year. Well, you know, it's the maturation of our offensive line. It's the maturation of our quarterback uh, doing a good job getting the football out of his hands. Uh, you know, uh, the backs are protected well. You know, guys are running route. Uh, you know, I think sacks sometimes can, uh, can, can be put on the offensive line, but you know, sometimes it can be running back, sometimes it can be the quarterback holding on to the ball. But those guys are improved. Uh, they didn't play as well as we would have liked for them to play uh, down in Tallahassee. But, uh, you know, they're, they're improved. And for us to be successful, you know, they've got to continue not giving up sacks and giving us the ability to run the football. Thank you, Coach. When I open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a phone question, please press the 1, followed by the 4. One four to register a question. There appear to be no questions on the phone lines at this time. Coach, uh, talk about this weekend's game versus North Carolina Central. As we know, it will be a physical contest, and it will probably be decided at the end uh, as usual. Uh, Just talk about the Eagles and what stands out during your early studies. Well, since I've been here, uh, these games have come down to the, to the last possession, you know, from the days when Coach Mack was there. Uh, and I've known Coach Eastman for a long time. We kind of started our career together years ago, and, uh, you know, Graham has always been a great defensive mind. You can see that on defense. Uh, they've had their early struggles, but, you know, they bounced back and uh, beat, a, beat a good Howard football team. Uh, they're athletic on both sides of the ball. Uh, their quarterback's playing really, really well right now. Uh, you, know, he's a, you know, he's an additional running back for those guys, and, uh, you know, anytime you have a quarterback that can generate, you know, almost 300 yards a game rushing the pass, and he's somebody to be worried about. And, and they've got the preseason defensive player of the year in, in, in the MIAC. Uh, you know, their safety is a really good football player. He's surrounded by a lot of good football players. So, uh, you know, we went down to be central with their place last year, and I'm sure they'll be excited to come up here to Norfolk and, and be ready to go on Saturday. Hey, Coach, we have a one question that just came in, so hold on one second, please. And that is from the line of Melvin Beal with Inside Sports. Please proceed with your question. 
Good morning, Coach. How are you? Good morning, Melvin. How are you? I'm well. Coach, I called that game uh, against Florida A&M, and I believe you had an injury to number 90, Brantley. Um, what's his status right now? Uh, Walt, Walt is out for the season. Uh, he, uh, he had a lower leg injury, and he, he's, he's going to miss the rest of, rest of the season for us. How does that impact your defense? Well, you know, it, it impacts our defense. Walter was playing about uh, 15 or 20 snaps for us. It uh, gave some depth and gave some big body inside. But uh, it's a next man up mentality for us. And our defense line has played well all season long. And we'll shuffle some guys around and continue to move forward. Any other injuries coming out of the Florida A&M game? No, sir. Okay. Thanks and good luck this week. Thank you. And there are no further questions at this time. Hey, Coach Scott, uh, this week is homecoming in Norfolk, and um, you've been through a few of them before, so you know what to expect. But just what's your philosophy, and how do you get the team to balance what's going on around them, and also knowing that there's a football game to prepare for also? Well, you know, coming off a loss, it's, it's, it's much easier. Uh, our guys know that we need to win a football game. Uh, our campus and our SGA and our students, they do a great job of uh, putting on homecoming festivities. In fact, they, they kicked off homecoming last Friday, but uh, you know we, we've made it clear to our, to our administration and everybody that we'll participate in homecoming at 5 o'clock on Saturday. So uh, you know, hasn't been a ton of conversation about it because we're just not going to deal with it, and I think our guys are, are mature enough to understand that if we get caught up in those things and uh, we've got a good football team coming to town, they can beat us. So we need to be focused and uh, – and, and concentrated on uh, Central. And uh, speaking of Central, and obviously you're aware of what go, what's been going on in the standings. And uh, do you, is there do you need to really have much motivation knowing uh, that every game basically is a championship game each week? No question about it. I think uh, it's a it's a situation to where you know you can lose and your season's over. You know, who knows if, if anybody's going to catch Florida and they still got some games to play. But at the end of the day, if, uh, if we don't take care of our business like we had the opportunity to last week uh, or two weeks ago, then, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're playing for nothing. So uh, we're focused on this thing, and we're making it a one-game season each week from here on out. And before we close out, let's talk about uh, Dale Craig. That's a name we haven't uh, said much of the year, but he leads your team in tackles. Uh, we tied with Contrell Chung. Let's talk about his play and uh, what has he brought to your defense uh, along with the other usual standouts such as Chavis, Price, and Chuck. Well, you know, Dale's, uh, Dale and Quintrell are two inside linebackers. The way our defense is set, uh, those guys should lead the team in tackles. Uh, that, that's the way it's been. But uh, Quintrell's been a, been a steady force for Dale. Uh, Quintrell makes a lot of the calls. that gives Dale the ability to just kind of run around and play. Dale transferred in from uh, Middle Tennessee. You know, he's a kid out of Atlanta. And, He's been a tremendous addition to our football program. Uh, lots of speed, lots of athleticism. Uh, you know, gives us a guy that can rush the passer. Um, you know, so we're, we're, we're thrilled to have him. And, uh, you know, our defense, as I said, played well enough for us to win in Tallahassee. We've got to get ourselves going on offense uh, to make sure that we're, we're evening out the deal. Well, Coach, thanks again for speaking with us, and we'll talk with you this time next week. All right, Ryan. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Norfolk State will return to action this weekend, and they will have homecoming as they will host North Carolina Central. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m., and the contest will be streamed live on ESPN3. Our sixth head coach this morning that will join us uh, is Eric Rayburn from Savannah State. The Tigers dropped a tough contest to Morgan State and will have an open weekend. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning. Coach, I recap last weekend's game versus Oregon State as the difference in the game was a fumble recovery uh, in the second half. Yeah, you know, geez, I, we uh, we really feel like uh, you know made some costly mistakes in the football game, obviously, and uh, we missed three field goals, you know, down in the red zone, uh, came away with no points, uh, which which was killer, and uh, and then obviously uh, defensively. Um, only gave up 18 points, but uh, there are two touchdowns. Uh, we had them stopped on third down both times, and uh, they would have had the punt on fourth down, and we got called for taunting twice. So um, it, was, uh, it was a frustrating game.
game, to say the least, and, and uh, you know, one we felt like, you know, we, we had opportunities to win and, and uh, uh, just uh, screwed it up. Well, Coach, with uh, the situation that you've been in in terms of your games this year, basically it's come down to a few plays. Um, now, how do you keep a young team such as yours grounded knowing that there's very close to turning the corner, but then also how do you not overcoach to where, you know, they're, you, you take them out the groove, uh, you know, knowing that the difference between winning and losing is basically a play or two? Yeah, it's tough. You know, we we, uh, we do we play a lot of young guys, uh, unfortunately. And so, you know, the I think, you know, when you play – one or two young guys, you know, and you got a veteran team, it's it's a little easier, you know, because, uh, you know, they got to make a couple of mistakes in, uh, due to inexperience, but um, you can overcome it. But uh, when you have so many young guys out there, you know, I think uh, our young guys are playing pretty well. It's just, uh, you know, they make one or two mistakes, but we have, you know, 15 of them out there as opposed to uh, two or three. And, and so it just, uh, it's hard to, you know, play as consistent uh, snap in and snap out as we'd like and, and it's hard to play as consistent as you need to if you're going to win these close games so um, so yeah it's, it's frustrating you know I, I, obviously we, we feel like we're much better you know way more competitive um, than when we got here but you know it's, just, it's frustrating that uh, we haven't been able to you know turn the tide and, and uh, win some of these games and you had two players last week on defense, and Malik Simmons and Walter Yates. They combined for 24 tackles and two and a half sacks, and uh, also uh, two forced fumbles by Simmons. Just talk about their play and what uh, they've been able to bring to the table at this point. Yeah, Malik's uh, you know just uh, got great player, but uh, more than that, just you know great attitude. You know, always upbeat. You know, always. Um, first guy to congratulate his, the teammate, his teammates when they make a good play, and and uh, but he, he had a great game on Saturday and and uh, played well enough to give us a chance, and um, and then Walter is uh, you know a guy we're really happy with, uh, true freshman, um, so he's I, I think he's just getting better and better, and and uh, we feel like you know by the time he's a junior or senior he's he's going to be uh, you know a dynamic player, but uh, so we're really happy with. Uh, you know how how quick he's kind of um, got accustomed and and uh, uh, to our defense and and uh, we feel like he's getting better and better each week. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, should you wish to register for a question, please press the one followed by the four on your telephone. One four to register for a question. And there appear to be no questions on the phone lines at this time. Uh, Coach, uh, talk about your open week and uh, what do you plan on working on uh, from a physical and mental perspective? Well, we're just going to keep trying to um, do what we do, you know, keep, keep grinding away to, to try and get our guys more and more comfortable uh, with their assignments um, so we have fewer and fewer uh, mental mistakes. Uh, obviously, we're going to try to you know, get some guys some rest and uh, get them get them feeling healthy again. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll be able to accomplish that this week and, and head into ne next week, uh, you know, mentally and physically uh, sharp. And also, uh, with a bye week, kind of this, uh, I don't want to say late in the year, but in – late October, just talk about uh, how would you approach it differently uh, compared to one, let's say, in the early part of the season? Yeah, I guess, you know, typically when, when you have um, when you have the bye weeks later in the year, you, you got to have more focus on, you know, trying to get your guys, uh, you got to get their bodies back and, you know, uh, every, everyone's kind of uh, a little banged up. Uh, after playing, you know, six games, um, so I think uh, earlier in the year you you, you maybe 
get after a little bit more in practice and and uh, try to use it, uh, you know, to you know to sharpen up. But uh, I think later in the year you have to you have to shift some of that focus to you know getting guys healthy and and uh, uh, trying to make sure everyone feels uh, the best they possibly can feel heading into the second half of the season. And uh, coach. Uh, before we close out, uh, going back to the game last week, and this is positive, you had 348 yards of total offense, and you outgamed Morgan State. So, with you know, with your team having bright spots, uh, just talk about the play uh, of trying to how do you maintain or how do you develop consistency uh, when you have had bright spots at several points throughout the season. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, obviously uh, there was plenty of good things to. You know, to point out from the game last week, uh, and uh, you know, I thought we, I thought we passed the ball better. Um, so we had we had some guys step up at receiver and play better than they played. So, um, so that, um, defensively, you know, we had some guys, you know, like Walter, who you know um, definitely played his best game since he's since he's been here. So there there was plenty of guys, uh, you know, that that did well. Um, so you know, obviously, you don't you don't want to just uh, dwell on the, th- the mistakes that you make. You you, you got to point those out and clean them up and try to correct them. But uh, but I think you, you know you got to try to stay positive too and point out all the good things that uh, uh, that the guys are doing as well. And uh, speaking of receiver, probably the best name in the MEAC, James Kicklighter. Uh, just talk about his play. Is he had 77 yards on five catches? Uh, just. Talk about his development and what does he add to your offense? Yeah, you know James. James has really improved since you know since I got the job here, and uh, uh, you know when we first got here, I, I wasn't sure whether or not he'd, he'd ever he'd ever be able to get out there and help us, and and uh, he really came on towards the second half of last year, and uh, had a, had a great off season, and uh, works his tail off, and uh, the great kid, and um, so man, I, I it's. It's been great to see him, you know, play well um, for the first half of this season uh, because he's 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 one of the, he's one of those guys that you that everyone on the team kind of roots for. You know, he's a uh, um, hard worker. You know, gets along with everybody, and and uh, you know, everyone kind of wants to see him be successful because of the type of guy he is. Well, coach, thanks again for speaking with us, and enjoy your off weekend, and uh, we'll talk with you. Uh, this time next week is prepared for your next game. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Savannah State will have an will have a bye weekend and will return to action versus Norfolk State on October 27th, and they'll be their homecoming. We're now joined by South Carolina State University head coach Buddy Pugh. The Bulldogs are coming off a close. Uh, lost to Bethune Cookman and will return home to host Delaware State on Saturday. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm good. Coach, last week you fell behind early, but your team fought back and came within a missed two point conversion of tying Bethune Cookman. Uh, just talk about the game last week and what were the, some of the highs and uh, if you want even the lows. Well, um, we did play. Uh, Bethune at home last Saturday, and uh, uh, Bethune beat us. Um, we had a chance to tie it up at the end and couldn't quite make it happen. Uh, got down a little bit too far in the beginning of the game. Uh, they had us down, I think, maybe 25 to to, to, to 6, somewhere in there. Um, after we did score, they were able to block one of our extra points and uh and return that for a touchdown that touchdown ended up being that whatever the heck you call that two point that the defense gets when they uh when they block a kick and run it back it was the difference in the ball game so uh you know we've got our work cut out for us to figure out how to protect especially protect our long snapper you know who we think maybe gotten a little bit of a lick in that deal and uh this is a question i pose similar to a few other coaches, especially when you deal with youth. Uh, each week your team is improving and it's evident, but obviously the difference of one play is now the difference between winning and losing. 
But uh, how do you approach that as a head coach? Do you harp on those plays, or you just try to keep them coached up and let them play uh, where they can play with an edge and not really worry about um, the, the small things uh, that can have an outcome on the game? Well, you know, I think it's been said a lot of times that it's the little things that count. But, you know, overall, no one play, I think, wins or loses a ball game. You've got to uh, uh, continue to play all the way from the beginning to the end. And uh, we ask our guys to, you know, to play together, you know, for the entire football game. And if you can do that, then you'll have your opportunity. It's just that sometimes you get into uh, a, a little bit of a situation where you make some kind of mistake and you let it maybe multiply, and then by the time you get your opportunity to win, you know, you've blown it by some previous mistake. So, you know, what you try to do is, is minimize all of, the, all of the situations that might harm you, you know, as the game goes on, waiting for your opportunity. When your opportunity comes, you need to be in position to be able to actually take advantage of it. Thank you, Coach. We're going to open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, should you wish to register a phone question, please press the 1, followed by the 4 on your telephone, 1-4 to register for a question. And there appear to be no questions on the phone lines at this time. Coach, uh, talk about playing a Delaware State team that's like you in terms of uh, youth all around and they're hungry for a win. Just talk about hosting them uh, for homecoming this week. You're exactly right, uh, Ryan. Uh, we play uh, Delaware State this coming Saturday here in Orangeburg for our homecoming. And it's a big weekend here in Orangeburg. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, all of the bells and whistles and, and what have you for, you know, a big uh, college uh, homecoming weekend planned. And, you know, a big part of it is this game. Uh, we need to play a good bit better. Uh, Dale State's struggling, too. You know, they're young also. Uh, Coach Milstead and his outfit have, you know, great ideas, though, about, you know, about how you do things. And, you know, they've been, you know, somewhat, uh, I guess, unfortunate in the fact that, you know, they've got some bad breaks early in games, particularly this past weekend where Howard, you know, who can, you know, get, you know, so many big balls on you, so many deep balls on you, get, you know, make some plays on them early. But, you know, we've got to figure out, you know, how to do some of the kinds of things that, uh, you know, some of the other people have done to them because Delaware, they can run the football. You know, they, you know, they got, you know, good pieces in place. You know, it's, it's, you know, I think it's obvious that they, you know, got an opportunity to, you know, to beat some teams in this league. And we just hope it's not us. But at the same time, you know, if we don't get on our, if we don't play better than we played at times, then these these guys come in and they'll beat us. And it's homecoming, and uh, and similar to what I asked Coach Scott earlier and other coaches uh, during their homecoming weeks, what is your philosophy on letting the team enjoy homecoming but knowing that the game is important also? Uh, over the years, has it changed or has you kind of developed it or you kept a basically one certain uh, philosophy on homecoming and uh, letting the players get involved in it? Well, you know, what I like and what actually happens, you know, might not necessarily be the same. Uh, you know, we tell our guys, you know, all the time that, you know, that the, the festivities surrounding homecoming are not for them. Uh, they are to continue to prepare for this game as they would any other game. But now when there's, you know, parties going on and all kinds of things going on every night, you know, during, during the whole week, then you can pretty much expect somebody to partake of some of those style activities, but at the same time, we'd like to think that our guys will be mature enough to pass by you know, those kind of chances and wait for the off season to do that kind of stuff. Uh, we understand, Coach. Uh, and also, just talk about, uh, I know we had talked about him a little last week, but your quarterback, each week he's growing, and he's basically a running and passing threat. I don't know if you want to run him as much as situations call, but just talk about uh, what has he been? What has he brought to the table, and what has he done himself to improve each and every week uh, to become the player he's becoming? Well, uh, Tyrese Nick is the young man I think you're uh, talking about, and uh, you know he is a uh, running threat as well as a as a guy that can hurt you some with his arm too. He's on a pace 
we think to possibly be able to rush for 1,000 yards as well as pass for 1,000 yards. We like for them to rush for a little less and pass for a little more. But, uh, you know, the style, you know, that, that, that he has is something that we need to take advantage of and be able to design our offense around that skill set. So we are running him a little bit more than we really probably would, probably should. But, you know, at the same time, you know, that's where, you know, his strength lies. So we seem to want to try to continue to make that happen. And then also uh, defensively, uh, is anyone who's been standing out defensively for you? And uh, what are some of the things that you you like to work on as a defense as you prepare for the back half of your schedule? Uh, the one thing that really uh, sticks out, or well, the one position that sticks out for us, you know, are our inside guys up front. We've got a couple of defensive tackles. We actually got about three and a half defensive tackles up there that play pretty doggone well. And, uh, you know, we're awfully proud of, of you know, of how Paul McKeever and Tyrell Goodwin, uh, uh, Rod Perry, you know, those guys, you know, Dominguez, Wilson play. So, uh, you know, we think those guys are lead guys in our defense. We're awfully young in the secondary. There was a time this past Saturday against Bethune where we had four freshmen in our secondary at one time. So, uh, you know, that's almost a close your eyes and look out that kind of experience because you're not you know, sure if you want to look or not. So, you know, we've got some things about our defense that kind of scare you a little bit, but if they continue to develop these guys down the road a piece, I think it's going to be pretty good. And speaking of developing players, uh, you've uh, had a knack uh, for doing it over the years. Uh, obviously, the results don't lie when you look on Sundays. Uh, just talk about, with, especially with some young players and your experience and with developing, how quick do you think some of them will take on the attributes of some of your former greats or is it just a week by week and sometimes the light just come on even when you don't expect it? You know, you see it in most cases pretty early in their career. They say a little dog will bite you. And, uh, you know, as they, you know, come in, you know, you kind of can pick out the ones that you think will be, you know, the real, you know, big time guys amongst us. Um, I think we've got a couple guys here that might be pretty good players, but you know we kind of give them a couple years before we start tagging them and and, put, and placing you know expectations on them that might not be you know really uh, real realizable. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word or not, but now I can tell you that uh, it's fun to watch those young guys develop that way. You know, you see them early and you say, "Ooh, so and so and so gonna be pretty good." We got a freshman linebacker that we're red shirting that we think might be pretty good, you know, but I'm not, I don't even want to really call his name right now because, you know, sometimes I'm scared that he might do something else uh, that might not be so good. So we'll see down the road of peace. There'll be, you know, some kind of story out there pretty quickly, I guess, when the, when a guy actually starts making some, some numbers that will, you know, make you think that he might be that kind of player. And before we close out, Coach, uh, one thing I noticed is developing the inside guys and that's, Probably every team in America would love to have a consistent flow of inside guys, and you have several, and uh, you have now and over the course. So just talk about developing an inside guy and what does it take to get them to be to play consistent and competitive uh, throughout, you know, throughout their career. <laughs> well, I guess the common link, you know, in all those guys is Coach David Blanchard, uh, who's our assistant head coach and has been our defensive line coach for some years now. And, you know, I told Blanche, I said, I don't even go out there and watch your individual sometime because it's so brutal until we don't necessarily want to be a witness to what they do to those guys because they're working so hard, you know, on a, on, you know, on a pretty much a daily basis. And, you know, we've had an offensive line guy, too, who wanted to be a defensive lineman. And I tell them, I say, you know, do you think you can handle that individual over there that they do as a defensive lineman? Because they'll find out, you know, her if you want to be a defensive lineman in South Carolina State. So, you know, there's definitely, you know, a method to the madness. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot to do with the way those guys work. And, you know, if you go through this program and do what you're supposed to do for the entire duration of your career here, then you'll have a shot to play at the next level. Well, thank you, Coach. And uh, I guess I won't. I can keep 
you that dream of being a defensive lineman now. So, uh, <laughs> you might ought to you might ought to go watch for a day or two before you decide to volunteer to, to join that group. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, coach, thanks again and good luck for homecoming as you host uh, the Horn of Delaware State. Appreciate it, Ryan. Thanks. Uh, South Carolina State will face off against the Hornets of Delaware State in Orangeburg this Saturday at 1.30 p.m. The contest will be shown live on ESPN3. We're now joined by North Carolina A&T State head coach Sam Washington. The Aggies fell to North Carolina or fell to Florida A&M this past weekend in the closing seconds and will head to Bethune-Cookman on Saturday afternoon. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Good morning. Coach, I just recap last week's game versus Florida A&M as it was a tell of two halves uh, for your team. Absolutely. Uh, that's well stated. Uh, I thought the first half um, the kids came out and uh, we returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, and I think that generated a lot of energy on the sideline, and I uh, thought we fed off it, and um, I thought we played well defensively the first half. Uh, but, um, you know, give credit to uh, FAM uh, and that staff. I thought they did a fantastic job at halftime making certain adjustments, and um, they were able to keep the football, you know, and, and they kept the football for almost 20 minutes, uh, up to 30, and that's just, you know, really crazy. The defense got to find ways to get off the field, get the offense, you know, the opportunities. And uh, offensively, uh, I didn't think we played well either. Uh, penalties. Penalties really hurt us. We had 13 penalties and for 131 yards, and that's, uh, that's losing football when you're making that many mistakes or doing, you know, that much wrong uh, in, in the contest. And in the, both of the losses uh, you've had this, this season, it's basically come down to little things and also, in some cases, even a missed interception that pretty much can close the game out. Uh, just talk about the fine line you have to preach to your team, which basically now is becoming the difference between a win and a loss uh, that that you uh, that you would need to work on from this point. You know, actually, that's why I think it um, it hurts so um, badly and, and cut so deep because there are several one plays that could have changed the outcome of the ball game had we made those plays. And I think it's very important, you know, that the kids, you know, understand and recognize how important each play is. So you can't assume or um, not go give it your very best every snap because every play is very important. So uh, that's been um, what's taught and what's preached. Uh, and hopefully we learn from our mistakes. Thank you, Coach. We're going to open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a phone question, it is the one followed by the four on your telephone. One four to register for a question. And we do have a question from Samaj Marsh with BlueDeathValley.com. Please proceed with your question. How you doing, Coach? I'm well, thank you. Yeah, a lot has been said this week um, about the offense and some of the inconsistencies um, that the offense has experienced at different times this season. Um, do you feel like you have uh, a sense of the identity of this offense? And if not, what would you ultimately want the identity of this offense to be? Well, I'll tell you what. We have so much talent over there. We should be able to do pretty much whatever we choose. Um, so um, there's something not clicking, and uh, we as the coaching staff must find that something and, um, you know, get back to uh, what we do. Uh, we run the football, and we're able to throw the football. We have, uh, in my opinion, a, a fine receiving core that can, uh, you know, go vertical. Uh, they can catch the football. So uh, we'll get it fixed. Um uh, we have some uh, uh, issues right now. Has that been a challenge to kind of target so many weapons? Like, as you mentioned, you have at your disposal, you have uh, two capable running backs now and um, a host of tall, athletic receivers. 
but really there's only one ball to go around. Has, has that been somewhat of a challenge? To target well, the I don't think so. I really do not think so. Um, just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, the field is still 100 yards, so it's a lot of room for everybody, you know, to participate. And um, we just got to do a better job of spreading the ball around and uh, creating opportunities and allowing uh, the players to make plays. And, Coach, another thing you mentioned was the uh, penalties. And um, I think this past game there were uh, sportsmanlike conduct penalty, and that's kind of Ritter's ugly head a couple times this season. Um, as a defensive guy, can you just kind of describe the balance you have to have? Because obviously as a defensive player, you want to have an edge to you, maybe some swagger. But how do you balance that with, uh, I guess, that discipline and self-control? Is it, has, that, has that been a tough fight this year? Well, um, uh, periodically we've had some issues with uh, personal foul. Now, it was unsportsmanlike conduct, and it, I've been doing this a very long time, and that was the first time that profanity, uh, especially in that situation, was the, you know, uh, unsportsmanlike call. So, um I've heard a lot more profanity used out there, and uh, so it was a tough call, honestly. And uh, the kid was frustrated uh, because he felt, you know, he had been consistently held, you know, all day. Uh, but uh, it's not acceptable, and uh, you know, we, we'll punish him, you know, for doing it as well because it definitely hurt the team. It was a very critical moment in the ball game. Uh, and one last question um, on the bright side. Um, you've had a lot of new guys kind of emerge this year. Uh, one of them being Zachary Leslie, uh, who's uh, I guess he's almost your de facto number number one receiver now that um, Elijah Bell's been kind of um, uh, nursing some injuries. Can you just talk about his uh, development and how he's played a part this season? Absolutely. Uh, he has been a joy to watch, and not only in the game, he practiced like a champion. Um, he, he goes um, goes all out, you know, every play, and um, he's very inquisitive. Matter of fact, he just left the office. He he's a film guy. He come in and watch film, and he does the you know the little things. <coughs> Excuse me, with the film study, and um, I think he's going to be a very good one one day. Thank, thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Our next question comes from the line of Melville Beal with Inside Sports. Please proceed with your question. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Coach, talk a little bit about the challenge of uh, going up against the Finley Cook and what are some concerns there for them offensively? Oh, the, the quarterback. <laughs> and to put it mildly, uh, very athletic, you know, can throw the football and, um, you know, not only can he change directions, he's fast. So um, he can create some issues, you know, with his feet and with his arm. So uh, it's going to be very uh, important that we do a very good job keeping him contained and keeping him in the pocket and not allowing him to run around and, and create havoc for us. What is your uh, take on their defense? Uh, they are uh, very athletic. They, they they fly around, you know. They um, they're a solid team. Uh, hopefully, we can find some things that uh, we can do that may be successful. Um, but they are very athletic, and so you know that's that Florida where you if you want speed, they say that's where to go. So they're a team full of speed. Okay, thanks, coach. All right. And there are no further questions at this time. Coach Washington, thanks again for speaking with us, and uh, good luck this weekend as you head down to Daytona to face off against the Duke Cookman. Thank you so very much, Ryan. You're welcome. Uh, North Carolina A&T State heads to Daytona Beach to face off against the Wildcats of the Duke Cookman. Kickoff is set for 4 p.m. this Saturday, and the game will be streamed live on ESPN3. We're now joined by North Carolina Central University head coach Granville Eastman. The Eagles were off this past weekend and will return to action at Norfolk State on Saturday. Good 
Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Glad to be with you guys. How are you? Uh, we're good, Coach. Uh, talk about your open week and what did your team and staff accomplish with the time off? Well, you know, it was a lot of back to fundamentals. Uh, we felt it was important to go back and review some things, the way we were teaching some things and coaching some things. It was also very important. We have quite a bit of young players uh, um, that have not really had the experience of playing, um, kind of playing around with their, you know, that retro year. So it's developmental, uh, developing them, placing emphasis on their fundamentals, understanding our offense, defensive schemes um, with the possibility that they may have to play. Uh, the season is far from being over. So um, it was that, and it was also just, you know, resting up, getting some guys healed up from some serious injuries all the way to, to bumps and bruises. So it was twofold. It was developing fundamental um, um, as well as making sure that we, we got healed up as much as possible. And it's October, and pretty much uh, since you've been at Central, constant themes that's been taking place is Halloween and also uh, a big regular season game in the month of October for your staff. Uh, so just talk about uh, what you know. What have you been preaching to the team about the games this month and the magnitude of the game? Because obviously each game is a championship game from this point. Absolutely. We, we felt from after the first conference game that we are in a playoff environment. Um, uh, if we even are dreaming about postseason play or anything to that nature, just to, just really to attain the goals we have set for ourselves. We've been in playoff football now for the last, you know, week or so. Um, so that's the mentality. But really, um, it, it's focusing on one game at a time and being disciplined. Um, can't look two, three down the road. Uh, we just really have one. We're, we're one week at a time. The staff is one week at a time. The program, the players, is just one week at a time. And so we've just been focusing on this upcoming game, understanding it's going to be a playoff environment. It's a playoff game um, for both teams not just us, for both teams. And so I'm trying to have that, that right mindset as well as uh, emphasizing our, our discipline. And speaking of playoff environment, you're heading to Norfolk State, and it's their homecoming. And uh, like I've uh, talked with Coach Scott, we know this game probably won't be decided until the clock hits uh, zero. Uh, just talk about the Spartans and um, – what stands out during your film studies? Well, they're a great team. They're, they're playing good team football is what they're doing. They fly around on defense. They have about four or five guys that are very active, um, no question leaders. You know, number nine up front, um, um, the number seven's active at free safety, um, the, the Wahi kid in the secondary. And they have a whole host of other guys that uh, – they rally to the football well. I think number three, the linebacker, Shavis, is their number one, is their leading tackler um, on offense. Uh, Carter, you know, Coach Scott is a, I mean, it is a quarterback whisperer. Coach, it's him. How he's been able to mold that young quarterback and get him to the level where he's executing and playing is really, really unbelievable. Just a true sophomore. Um, gets rid of the ball quick. Marcus Taylor, as we well know, is electrifying. Can score from anywhere on the field. And uh, Isaiah Winstead has come on. The Savage kid is running the football very, very hard. they got a multiple combination of running backs. Um, the offensive line uh, is improved. And uh, if you look at if we're in Norfolk State, over the last three, four years when we've played them, um, even when we were in, in, in contention for championship, those games have always been very close. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're one of those teams that they've always been right there with us. And, you know, it's a point here or there or a break here or there. And, uh, you know, they're winning conference championships, I've always felt so. Um, we just we just want to hope to, to keep the game close with a chance of winning the fourth quarter. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a phone question, it is the one followed by the four on your telephone. One four to register a question. And there appear to be no questions on the phone lines at this time. Uh, Coach, talk about the Norfolk Central uh, contest over the past few years as uh, I've had a chance to witness a few, and there was intense, and like we said, it came down to the end. Uh, do you think 
even though they might not be considered your natural rivals, it has that pretty much been a rivalry for both for the players on each team? A- absolutely. You know, we. Uh, I-, I think. I, I think uh, th- there's. I think there's a mutual respect. You know, uh, on both sides, that uh, you know, <laughs> one of these teams can either team can get you on any given day, and nobody wants to lose to the other one. You know, I think there's uh, uh, certainly a, a mutual respect on the coaching staff and the level of coaching and quality of coaching they have. I've known Coach Scott going back for over some 20 years. We started out as young coaches together, um, working the camp circuit. Uh, so very well know, know very well what he's capable of um, offensively and running an entire program. And I think it's just that 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 reluctance to give in to one another, um, uh, to uh, to to. To, to scrap and fight and claw, and, and you know that's why they came in and did what they did to us last year at home. Uh, it was 21 nothing at halftime, and we clawed our way back in the game and unfortunately fell short. But um, that's just that resiliency. And uh, like I said, we've had battles over the last few years, but I think it's it's from mutual respect. Both teams are are trying to build the same way. Want to be tough. Want to be physical. Um, um, uh, uh, try to play the game the right way. Um, and, and well coached, I know they are, and so I think that that really leads to the you know, why you see these battles um, against one another. And obviously, with those type of battles, it'll come down to one or two small things, especially special teams. And you have a, a freshman in Adam Lippy uh, leads the team in scoring, and. Uh, has only missed two PATs with perfect on field goals as a true freshman. So just talk about his play and what have you, uh, what did you expect out of him coming into the season? Well, you know, he, he's a great story for us. You know, he's uh, he came up, as, he came on as a as sort of as a backup insurance policy kicker. Um, was uh, really just really um, he, he he was competing for his job. And uh, the thing about Adam, we really saw we saw some really good growth coming out of spring. And then some confidence came as well. And he just continued to work on his craft. He's very serious about his business, about, you know, about kicking and, and, and doing a good job, not letting his teammates down. And uh, to his credit, you know, that confidence has continued on from the spring into the season. And, you know, we've developed a, you know, we, we, we've developed a, a trust thing where we know within certain distances we can put him out there with a good chance to make a really big kick. To help give the team a lift or a lead or, or help bring us back, and again, it's a, it's a credit to him for you know first of all developing confidence and working on his game. And uh, if anyone, I, I don't think we could have predicted that he would have come this far so fast, but we certainly are hoping that he'll continue you know <laughs> on the rise in, in his kicking game because it just makes us better. And before we close out, Coach, I saw a stat, and I you may need to correct me on this, but. You hardly have turned the ball over, if I'm not mistaken, one time. Don't jinx us on that. I was really, there are two stats I have in the back of my mind I, I was hoping you wouldn't bring out. That's one of them. Um, I think it's a credit to Coach Taylor and the offensive right. staff. We have been preaching for um, coming out of the offseason. Uh, that's one area we wanted to grow was to uh, take care of the football it's been an emphasis in every game. Um, I honestly can't tell you what the magical formula is. Uh, we've, we've, we've not emphasized it really much less or any really more than we, we have in the past. I think, I think there's some maturity on that side of the ball that's starting to come along. And I think so with that, there's the understanding of the importance of just taking care of the football. And, uh, again, that's a credit to the coaching staff and the players buying in, understanding, and getting it done. Well, Coach, I will stop there, and uh, we we can erase that from the call. So I want to make sure if it's, if it's a jinx, I'm not going to no, call no, that. No such thing, my friend. I'm just having some fun with you, that's all. <laughs> uh, no problem, Coach. Uh, well, thanks again for uh, speaking with us, and good luck as you head uh, down to Norfolk or we'll head up to Norfolk this week uh, to take on the Spartans and your good friend Latrell Scott. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. North Carolina Central will face the Spartans of Norfolk State in Norfolk this weekend for the Spartans' homecoming. The contest will be streamed live on ESPN3. We're now joined by Morgan State University head coach Ernest Jones. The Bears
Mariners defeated Savannah State last weekend in a hard-fought contest and will return home to host Howard University this Saturday night under the lights on the campus of Morgan State. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning. I am doing well. How are you? I'm good. Coach, recap last week's game as it was uh, a slugfest uh, to, to call it. Uh, and just talk about um, how did you get out the win versus Savannah State. Yeah, uh, Savannah put a, brought a good team down there. It's really tough to beat somebody on their home field. As I said before, watching them on tape, I wouldn't be surprised if they beat a, a couple other teams in our league. I mean, they're, they're a really good football team. They're a physical team. They play hard. they got a bunch of athletes running around. And what we just tried to do is stay true to who we are, to our identity. We tried to run the football on them and tried to control the game by running the football. And we got after the quarterback a little bit and put him in some situations, showed him some looks that he probably hadn't seen. And uh, we was able to make some plays because of it. Well, speaking of getting after the quarterback, uh, defensive player of the week, Ian McBurrow, seven tackles, two tackles for loss, and two sacks. But then there's a person we haven't called his name uh, much this year. Uh, I want to make sure I don't mess his last name. Chris Fatagoma. Uh, yes, sir. Two and a half sacks and five tackles. Uh, just talk about both of them and who are they and what do they, what do they bring to the table? Yeah, Ian McBurrow is, uh, you know, I've been saying all year, I think we have three of the uh, best linebackers in our league, and I'll stand on the table with that. Ian McBurrow is one of the three. He's the captain of our football team, a uh, really good player, instinctive player, electric player. He can run. He can cover the slot wide receiver if need be. He has a knack for getting after the ball carrier and making tackles, and we love blitzing him. He fits through the holes, you know. We like we like running him through the gap, so he's good at blitzing. And then you got a senior uh, tackle out there with Chris Fatagoma. I mean, he's been out there. He's an Eddie Steady type of guy. He'll hold his gap, maintain his gap every once in a while. He'll get in the, in the backfield. He's one of those type of players that's just going to do what we're asking him to do. And, and he was able to cut loose, you know, uh, j just within the scheme. We didn't do anything special. He was just winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup and was able to get in the backfield. And pretty much uh, before we move on to this week's opponent, um, your defense, and you mentioned – you set a tone, and they are executing the tone you set for them this year. So uh, just talk about, uh, from this point, where do you want them to go? And But just talk about getting them to buy into the tone. What did it take for them to do that? Yeah, just, just the consistency of the message. You know, I'm a big message guy. I believe in messaging, and I believe if we say the same thing over and over and over, it'll become natural, part of their DNA. Our defense, you know, we're going, we take chances, you know. So, uh, are you, you know, if you can beat us one-on-one -on -one in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you got a chance. Well, well we're going to take chances. We're going to get after the quarterback, try to confuse him a little bit. You know, our nemesis this year is the big play. I mean, uh, we play so well, you know, we may go 13, 14, 15 snaps in a row and snap 16, we give up a big play. we got to limit the big play opportunities because sooner or later it's going to bite us and it's going to hurt us. But we're going to keep being aggressive, aggressive, keep being attacking, and keep saying the same message. Thank you, Coach. We'll open up the call for questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a phone question, it is the one followed by the four on your telephone. One four to register for a question. And we've got a question from the line of Phil Schoner with Sports Fever Television Network. Please proceed with your question. Hi, Coach. Talk a little bit about William King, a uh, senior that is now uh, in the forefront, I guess, with some injuries uh, at the running back position, the, the Baltimore kid, and uh, what he's uh, given the team. Yeah, it's exciting to be able to, to, to see uh, him. We'll go out there and play a little bit. I mean, he's a, a active player. He's an effort guy. You know, he'll give that second and third effort. We like that. He brings some energy when he's on the field. He's one of those guys that's always smiling, always jumping around, loves contact. Every time he gets hit, he's going to jump up off the ground and smile and yell. And, you know, he just likes that. So our, our, the kids get, get, get up when he's on the field. Uh, we like having he can catch the ball out of the backfield. You know, uh, our, our two starting tailbacks went down a couple weeks ago, and, and he's our third tailback. Now he's our one tailback, and we're going to continue to try to run the football with Will King. But we do like the effort that he brings in regards to uh, second and third efforts, and we love the fact that he's from Baltimore representing. Coach, looking at the stats this morning, two things stand out to me. Number one in the MEAC in time of possession, almost 33 minutes. Um, 
And then on the defensive side, number one on third down. So that, I think, from what we talked earlier, is the formula that you wanted to win. With that said, and both those things kind of working for you, I mean, you, you think if the team had more, uh, you know, felt more success, you might have four wins instead of two at this point. Just, just these guys, you know, knew how to win games. Uh, when you look at the Albany game and the South Carolina State game down the stretch. Yes, sir. I mean, Phil, it's a, it's a process. You know, when you're trying to change a culture, you're trying to teach a football team how to win win football games, finish football games, be true to their identity, you take some, some bruises along the way, and that's what we're doing. Obviously, we'd like to see a little bit more wins than what we have, but we're pleased at where we are because our ultimate goal is to be uh, in, a, in a race for the conference championship uh, come uh, mid-November, and that's what our focus is. I said, but the time of possession game is part of our identity. We want to control the football. We want to control it. We want to run a football, and we're gonna, we want people to stop us from doing it. If they don't do that, we're going to continue to lead in the time of possession, and we're going to continue to run the football. We told our football team, if you want to win on defense, you got to get off the field in third down. And we wanted to be the best football team in our league on third down, and, and that's what's happening right now. we just got to continue to maintain, continue with the message, and continue to, to try to control the game via time of possession and get off the field on third down. Final question for me, Coach. Uh, with dealing with Newton this week, um, he's hard to get to because of his ability to run the football. How do you game plan against uh, uh, Kalen with his abilities to, you know, to extend plays and then also take off with his legs as far as you wanting to get to him. I mean, it's tough. I mean, we don't we don't have a guy on our practice field that can duplicate what that young man can do on a football field. He's an electric football player, both with his feet and with his arm. And uh, we we just have to tell our guys to be very disciplined in the call that we're that we're saying. And if you get a pad on him, you got to bite the football and get him down to the ground. He's not gonna go down easily. You got to really hit him. You got to really tackle him. And we tell our wide receivers, you got to be on body coverage. I mean, he has some electric receivers over there. He has a favorite target in in, uh, in Ezra, who I know he's going to try to get the ball to, but there's nothing you can do to prepare for a guy like that. He's, he's an electric football player who can beat you running the football and throwing the football. So it'll be our biggest challenge to date uh, for, from a quarterback standpoint. Thanks, Coach. I'll see you Saturday night. Yes, sir. Thanks, Phil. And there are presently no further questions on the phone lines at this time. Coach, before we close out, uh, talk about Saturday night. You're hosting Howard. Uh, a rare night game in October in Baltimore. Just talk about uh, the environment and what to expect uh, from that contest. Oh, we're so excited to be able to host this game. We know that, that Howard's going to travel well. They're going to bring them down here for the game, and we're going to uh, pack the stadium as well. So it'll be a uh, capacity field stadium. The atmosphere will be electric. We'll have the team ready to play. I mean, you can't ask for a better team to come in here and play a night game, like you said, in, in mid-October than to bring Howard in here. So we're excited about it. It'll be a tough test. It'll be a big challenge for us. I mean, they got weapons all over the field, but we're going to try to play a good, sound, fundamental game and try to play our game, be true to who we are, and see if we can uh, compete against Howard in this football game. And lastly, uh, Coach, from game one to where you are now, just talk about the growth of your team. Uh, mentally and physically uh, from when you first uh, took over the team uh, pretty much from the beginning uh, but also definitely when the season kicked off too. Yes, sir. I mean, we. I'm so very proud of them owning up again. You know, I'm not trying to keep beating a dead horse, but owning to their identity and who we are. They believe in who we are. We understand what it is we want to do in the football game, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, and they believe in the messaging. I mean, you're getting players now repeating what we're saying to other players, competing, com repeating what we're saying to coaches, just believing that they can compete. See, the first thing we wanted them to do was to compete, and then we wanted them to compete for four quarters. So there's nobody that watches this football team that will say that they're not competing and that they're not competing for four quarters. And we truly believe that if we can do that, we'll have a chance to win every football game we play. So I'm very pleased with where they are right now. And like I told them each and every day, our ultimate goal is to be in the conversation for a MEAC Conference Championship come November. And right now we're in position to still be in that conversation. Well, Coach, thanks again for uh, speaking with us. And good luck on Saturday night as you host Howard, and we'll talk with you again this time next week? Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Morgan State University will host Howard University Saturday night under the lights 
at Hughes Stadium. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. and the game will be shown live on ESPN and regionally and slash locally on Sports Fever TV.